Hey guys, today we are making a low carb chicken chili verde in our electric pressure cooker. Oh, we're well, having a whole lot of fun. Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen. I am Chris from Recipes at Croc.com. I am Mikey from Recipes at Croc.com. And today we are gonna have a Foodie Friday and we are gonna make one of our favorite soups that honestly I could not believe was not already on the vlog. What is wrong with us? The crock pot version is already on the website. So now we're gonna put the electric pressure cooker version because we make it a lot in the foodie, especially when we're on the road. Especially when we're in the Southwest. Uh-huh. And so what we do, you could do this two different ways. We, uh, actually you can make it multiple ways because we make this with chicken or with pork. And so today we're doing it with chicken and we're actually doing it with frozen chicken. We have three pounds of frozen chicken in frozen there. Frozen chicken in an instant pot? A crock or not? Hang on. Do you know what brand you're talking about? This? <laughs> Go through all the brands like your children. Instant pot. <laughs> Uh, uh crock pot's got one we're using a foodie yes frozen chicken in a foodie <laughs> yes so we're gonna go ahead um and use three pounds of frozen uh boneless skinless chicken thighs you can use chicken breast if you prefer you could also use thawed uh, meat you can um you can cook it for about the same amount of time and it'll just cook your soup a little bit longer or you could cut your cooking time probably down to 10 minutes and um, if you're using fresh. But we're using frozen because that makes it nice and easy. We can just dump everything in. And so the ingredients you need for this recipe are... Three pounds of chicken. Ours is frozen. One jar of salsa verde. Three tablespoons of butter. One can of chopped chilies. Leave the juices. Cup and a half chicken broth. One tablespoon of garlic. That's a heaping tablespoon because we like garlic. Two tablespoons of minced onion. One tablespoon of cumin. We also like cumin, so that's a heaping tablespoon. One teaspoon of oregano. That's how they say it over in Great Britain. Oregano. One teaspoon of chili powder. Gives a little heat, a little flavor. One teaspoon of paprika or paprika. However you want to say it. Six slices of crispy bacon that we're going to chop up. Which you could totally cook in your foodie ahead of time using the air fryer feature and save them juices for the soup. And two Anaheim chilies, seeded and chopped. Oh yeah, and salt and pepper. That's what you need to get your soup cooking and then to garnish. I thought we were going to have a contest. I want to jump ahead. <laughs> I at least want to chop up my bacon while you're talking. I was bored. <laughs> And, uh, but to top the soup, you're gonna want fixins like uh, definitely lime. Um, we like to use guacamole or you could use sliced avocado and then sour cream. So those are the things that we top it with. But, yes. but Mr. Jump Ahead over here told me we were gonna have a contest. He was gonna chop all that stuff up while I dumped I all I need a head start, in. I'm a slower cook. So I'm gonna start right now. So she's gonna put in her ingredients while we do that. While she's doing that, what I wanna tell you is, how to seed an Anaheim pepper. Anaheim peppers are not super, super hot, but they do have some heat. And that heat comes from the seeds inside. So you definitely wanna make sure, especially if you don't really like the super spicy stuff, but you like a little heat. What I do is I go into the top and I cut a circle out to pull that stem out. And what that's also gonna do is it's gonna pull out the majority of the seeds. It comes out just like that. And I'm left with just a few that fell down in the bottom, which is good. That'll make that so much easier. I'm going to slice that sucker right in half, and then I like to get that pith out of there, that uh, that white stream that's where the, the seed capsules are all hanging on to. That pepper cleaned out really, really well. I get the white parts out just like that, and all I'm left with, if I get that white part out right there, is two, two halves of green pepper. I'm going to slice that up. And after I've sliced it up, I'm just going to chop it up. It doesn't have to be super fine. It doesn't have to be super chunky. It's however you want to chew up your peppers. I know you win. I just want to say, we're going to save the bacon to put in after pressure cooking. Yes. But I just wanted to get it done because, sure. frankly, I want to eat some of that I'm bacon. I'm going to dump this in. All right, that's one of them. 
And like I said, Anaheim's aren't a super hot pepper. I'm not sure where they fall on the Scoville scale. You can always I think Google it. I it. it honestly depends on the season. It, and those of you who are experts in all this, let us know. But I've gotten some that have been, had a lot of heat. Yes. And I've, had, I've gotten some that haven't had much. You better be careful wiping your face yeah. there, mister. Don't do what I did. Do not. Whatever you do, especially with Anaheim peppers, do not wipe your eyes. When you're done, wash your hands with soap and water. Warm water oh. so that it breaks down the oils from that capsaicin. And, and dear, yes, um, while we've been talking about Anaheim, we've been putting poblanos in there. <laughs> Is that what these are? Yep, they're poblanos. Walmart didn't have any Anaheim peppers, so we it's used Poblanos. Okay. Well, Those are a little hotter than Anaheim's, by the way. <laughs> now you tell me, because I was getting ready to take one and go, see, they're not that hot. Well, go ahead. Is it? To me, that sometimes yeah. they're spicy, sometimes they're not. But um, There's a little heat there. I, I apologize. You can use either one. Um, we usually use Anaheim whenever they're available. But... I read it on the recipe, and I thought that's what she got. Anaheim. <laughs> And I wonder why those Anaheim peppers were so short. Yeah. Because Anaheim, Anaheim peppers yeah. are long. Those are the ones, a lot of places, Anaheim's are the long ones that, like, they'll usually do a stuffed chili relleno in. So we're going to put our... I'm going to wash my hands before I wipe my face. <laughs> we're going to uh, um, put our, our pressure cooker lid on, put it to seal. We are going to put it under high... Hey, real quick. Are my pants pulled up or am I showing them? You're fine. Okay, just making sure. I thought I filled the draft. Go ahead. We're going to plug in the foodie so that it works. <laughs> there we go. Oh, guys, I tell you what. It, We've been stuck at home together for quite some time. It's been a little bit. Okay, so we're going to put this under high pressure for 15 minutes. Now... Because we uh, use frozen chicken, it is probably going to take a bit longer to get up to pressure. Yeah, just because it says it's cooking for 15 minutes, that doesn't mean in 15 minutes you're going to come back and have this. No, one. no. So it probably will take 10 to 15 minutes to reach pressure. Then it's going to go and it's going to fully uh, reach pressure. And then we're going to let it come down um, naturally without hitting quick release for about 15 minutes. So in essence, we'll probably see you be back here in about 45 minutes. <laughs> but so you don't have to wait that long. You'll see us in three, two, one. Okay, we are back. It's been about 45 minutes. Gotta be honest with you, got a new guitar in the mail, so I was playing it. it Might have went a little over and that just means our chicken's gonna be a wee bit more tender, but it looks like this. There you go, check that out. Look at all that color right there. Now we're definitely gonna wanna give this a stir and Chris can do that while she's chopping. But look at all that color. There is so much flavor in that soup. And all you wanna do, if you notice, we have the stainless insert in, so it's okay to use a fork in there. Otherwise, if you're using your uh, nonstick that is the conventional one that comes with it, you're going to want to pull that chicken out before you shred it up. But look how easy it is. Now, these are chicken thighs, of course, but look how easy it is to shred those up. And those went in there frozen. All right, while Chris is shredding up the rest of the chicken, uh, we need to talk about garnish. And one of those is you want to take a lime. One lime, any lime. You're being noisy. And I'm... <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to slice up that lime while she's shredding up the rest of that chicken. And you just want to do it in lime wedges. Now we were going to have guacamole, but... Were. Were. Our avocados are really, really green. Yes. And that means they're hard. So this would not make good guacamole. What you want is a dark uh, avocado that when you press on it just a little bit, it gives it's a little firm, bit. but it gives a, it, there's a give to it. The thing is, is we got these shipped to us this morning and we're taping this today yep. and there's no real fast way to do it. One way that you can speed up the ripening process of your av avocados is to put them in a paper bag and set them somewhere and they will ripen a lot quicker. They'll soften up, but we didn't have the luxury of time. So we're not going to eat hard avocados. Don't, don't, don't. I didn't hit it hard. I hit it like this. Nah! We're going to have, well, three ripe avocados in a few days and one bruised one. We'll eat that one first. We'll have avocado. That we'll have will be your in a guacamole, not mine. We'll have guacamole with leftovers. <laughs> okay, so like Mikey said, we're using our stainless steel insert so we can just go to town with our fork in here to shred this chicken up. It's real, real easy. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. And then right now. to this, we're going to add a cup of sour cream directly into the soup wow. um, in addition to 
the garnish that you'll put on the individual portions. So you want to go ahead and do that. Yes. And again, you can see we're being really, really precise with our measurements here. Yeah. But since we don't have guacamole, I don't care. That's just a little bit creamier. Notice, steel insert. I can do that, and she yeah, hasn't hit me once. Except you're going to fling it on me. <laughs> so we're just stirring in the sour cream to give it that creamy um, base. And then once you serve it, I like to add a little bit, another dollop of sour cream. And I really like a dollop of guacamole, but we can't. So we're just going to um, squeeze some lime over it. The yes. lime I love with these flavors, so don't skip the lime. Um, you can skip the lime if you have to. Ollie is... Uh, don't skip the lime. The lime Ollie is just a... said don't skip yeah, the lime. Yeah, Ollie's telling you the lime is good with it. Yeah. So we've got this all stirred up now. Okay. Here, why don't you serve some of that up? So we're gonna just put some in here. This is such a simple soup and it's so warming, especially when it's chilly outside. Yeah, and it is. It's, it's still in the 30s in here in Indiana right now. Mm -hmm. But all I'm gonna do to garnish mine is I'm gonna take some bacon because everything oh, tastes yeah, better with bacon. bacon. And after the bacon, I'll take just a small dollop of sour cream and then a lime wedge right over the top just like that. I'll put that on the side so it still soaks in there. I totally forgot. I would normally add the bacon I love lime juice. to the uh, the main soup and so that's what I'm going to do for our leftovers is I'm just going to toss the rest of this in there um, so that can flavor um, for a first time bite it's going to give a little crunch otherwise it's just going to get some flavor yes and also if you notice we have still reserved over here we did not use the salt or the pepper because we have so many spices going on in there i didn't want to over salt anything so this is where i would use my salt and pepper we're going to see if we need it you ready oh look at those chilies big piece of chicken right there Better cut that in half there we go what do you think Oh, I don't think it needs salt. Mm -mm. That mm -mm. bacon adds the salt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that crispy bacon goes in there so you get a little crunch on top of that. No, I wouldn't add any salt. And if I, I don't even think I'd add any pepper. I don't need any heat. Mm -mm. It's, it's warm. Those poblanos, or if you use Anaheim's, those two poblano peppers, you take the seeds out. It's going to take a lot of that heat out. And what it adds with that chili powder is just a little bit of heat in the back of your throat but nothing that's gonna burn. And I just love the smokiness of the bacon and the the citrus of the lime. It all just go, comes together and it's so flavorful. Yeah. Well, um, you've also got that smokiness of the, the cumin mm -hmm. and then you got that paprika in there, paprika, however you wanna say it. In every bite. That bowl's really hot. <laughs> and that, all it took was that one little lime wedge in there mm -hmm. to give it just enough citrus. The only thing that would make this better Guacamole. Guacamole. But or, yeah, because. Would well, you stop that? You could also. That's also what Ollie's barking at. He thinks somebody's at the door. Because he doesn't think somebody be in my kitchen knocking avocados. Um, you If you don't want to make guacamole, you could also just use uh, um, avocado slices. Yeah, just slice it up. Yeah. Mm. But if you like this video, we'd love for you to give us a thumbs up. If you're not already a member of the Crock Posse, we'd love for you to click subscribe down below and become a member of our slow cooking family around here. I'm being messy. If you would like notified every time we upload a video, click the ding link. That's that little bell down there next to the subscribe button. And that will tell YouTube you want to be notified every time we upload a video. But whatever you do, laugh often, eat good food, just like this, speak like. Bye, Bye guys. If you want to see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think we're funny, enough to send us money, click the Patreon link below.